Hey Chicago, what do you say? 9-8, Cubs beat the Rockies. Welcome to the CHGO Cubs post-game show presented by Factor Meal Kits. Use the code CHGO Cubs50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and free wellness shots for life with any active subscription at factormeals.com slash CHGO Cubs50. Cubs have won four straight games. It wasn't pretty tonight. But it's a sweep of the Rockies. You had some nice pitching. You had some bullpen problems. But most importantly, Cody, you got to win. So hello to everybody in the live YouTube chat. Best way to enjoy the CHGO experience is to sign up for the CHGO Sports YouTube page. Cody Del Mendo will be doing a Blue Moon Beer Bat Chug for you in just a few minutes. Start taking your bids and your wagers on how long that might take. He's been under 12 seconds every time this season so far. Someone actually created a Twitter account. It's called Cody Beer Bat Chugs. Well, I'm going to have to look for it now, though. Now I'm going to have to start following it. I got I, someone. They like made it like last night or within the last couple of days because I noticed, I noticed it uh, this morning. Um, well, it's somebody in the live YouTube chat. There's no oh question boy. about it. It's somebody in the live YouTube chat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at Cody Beer Bat. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, Cubs beat the... Is, does that mean I made it? That like, means you made it. You made it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, your, go ahead. Your Twitter account now, now has to be... The real Cody Del Mendo. <laughs> Cody Del Mendo. Yeah. You're gonna, you already paid for the check mark, right? So like that did, part's yeah. taken care of. Yeah. Nine eight over the Rockies. Mm. Uh, Cubs plenty of offense in this series. Plenty of offense in the four games. We'll talk about that. Uh, we do want to talk though about the pitching off the very top because Luke Little last night scoreless inning to finish the game. Tonight scoreless inning to start the game. He was the quote unquote opener. We were trying to figure out. Who is going to fill the slots with uh, Steele and Tyone out? Sure. Luke Little, a little bit of a surprise. And then Ben Brown, and both were very good. Yeah, Luke Little, uh, he struck out Tovar in that first inning with the high fastball, like 99, not even in the zone, got him to swing at it anyway. Um, and then Ben Brown, uh, you know, felt good after the first inning he went out there. Then it was more about, okay, what are you going to do after the first inning? Because – he pitched a good inning against the Rangers in his major league debut and then got cooked after that, um, and he answered the call. Now, we know the Rockies' offense is not the Rangers' offense. However, uh, just good for him to go out there and, and take care of business, uh, and we'll talk about it as the show goes along in terms of everything that happened later in the game. But as far as those two guys, they have to be the uh, – Kind of the, the the big stars of the night outside of the offense. At yeah, least. I mean, if it, if it was hockey, right, mm -hmm. and you were doing three stars of the night, I would have Ben Brown as one, and I would have I, not in any order. Ben Brown, Saya, and Michael Bush. Michael Bush, yeah, Michael yeah. Bush, yeah. Slash yeah. Luke Little. Well, yeah. well, Ben Brown, what he did was he was able to save the bullpen a little bit, even though they ended up having to use mm -hmm. Craig Council ended up having to use more guys than he probably wanted to. Um, but I'm, and I'm still not sure that the hit that really took him out of the game obviously was the double over Hap's head. Yeah, which I I, did, I think he thought was a home run, or he just didn't get a good read on it. Well, either way, like, something or he lost it in the lights. I don't know what it was, but if it weren't for that, I'm, I'm not sure he might not have gone another inning. I don't know about that because he was pretty quick to come out and get. Him. Oh yeah, well as soon as he got a runner of second, the inning. Runner at second. That was it. It was. Yeah. But if he'd gotten all three guys out, one, two, three. Yes, sure. But he, he, it wasn't he didn't, like his though. pitch count was at like eighty. He was at yeah. fifty-two. I think I, the thing is, like, say 
say it's a single instead of a double. I don't it's know. It's a single. He probably takes him out, but I'm just saying right. it's caught. But yeah. I don't think he was gassed out there. I thought he was no. pretty good. And I liked his, like, uh, JD talked about his body language. I did like it. There was mm-hmm. a little swagger to him yeah, out there. He's got, swagger. And I've heard um, some of the guys, whether it's in radio interviews or TV interviews, I've heard them saying he's got plenty of confidence. Like, one thing Ben Brown doesn't lack is confidence. And you go back to his Major League debut, he had a good inning against the Rangers. Mm-hmm. But they wanted to build him up any, you know, pitch-wise enough so that he could have this opportunity to go stretch him out a little bit. They brought him back for a second inning. Defense let him down, and it turned into a disaster. I put zero stock into a guy's Major League debut because some guys go out there and don't even remember what they were doing. Sure. And, and that's, that, may, that may continue for some guys for, for multiple times on the mound, but it doesn't matter how good you are in the minor leagues. When you step on the mound, anybody that's pitched in the big leagues will tell you, when you step on that mound for the first time in the big leagues, it's a totally different ball game. It's not like Cactus League. It's not like AAA. It's not like AA. You're playing in the big leagues for real. So I'm going to just throw out the other one. People are saying like, oh, is ERA coming into this? is terrible. Mm-hmm. Forget about it. I think you're much, you've seen a, a much better <laughs> sample of what he could be in his first inning of that performance and tonight than what you saw in the second inning against the Rangers. Yeah. And that is someone that can be very valuable potentially to this team, whether it ends up being a reliever or a starter. But the, as, the, as they say, the stuff plays. Yeah. Now the stuff plays. A few the strikeout of Chris Bryant was probably his most impressive of the night. Mm-hmm. Um, that was nasty. Um, so yeah, I, I just think it's a nice building block for him. Obviously, he's got to he's got to find a way to keep himself on the roster, right? Uh, I think they announced today that Tyone is going to t- make a rehab start in Double A this weekend, and he's going to make multiple rehab starts. So he's going to be back soon, and when he comes back. What does that mean for Ben Brown? I hope that he gets to stay because he's pitching well. Could be right? a couple more, a couple more outings like this. You'll uh, consider some things. Yeah, right. right a couple more, right. and he's going to get. He's. I would assume he's going to get those opportunities. Right. Well, especially until Tyone gets back, which again right. he's going to make multiple rehab out starts. So we we're still not going to see Tyone for another, you know, at least another week and a half. Right. You know what I mean? So. Like, At least. I, I think we're going to see Ben Brown a handful more times, and if he pitches well, I, I think he will have earned a, a, or at least made his case to stay. So, and if not a, into the rotation, at least be a, a guy out of the bullpen. I, I, lo- I actually kind of really love the fact that they went with the opener tonight. That way it doesn't necessarily make it feel like Ben Brown's starting the game. I guess, like, maybe, maybe it's, it a, takes some pressure maybe off it's him. a mental thing, you yeah, know? Maybe it takes a little pressure off I him. And know. your point – about when they pulled him from the game. I said he only had 52 pitches. I did want him to leave with a positive thought in his head. I didn't want him to give up. You don't want to give him, have him giving up like three runs then be like, well, that wasn't that great of an outing. He left feeling pretty, pretty good. Left four innings, three hits, one run, and five strikeouts and 52 pitches. <laughs> and that's why you trade David Robertson when you have a team that's not going anywhere because you might end up with a guy that can contribute, hopefully, like Ben Brown can. Sure. I just love the way Council's kind of plugging and playing him right now. Figure out where he's most comfortable. You, you, that's the, the beauty of playing the Colorado Rockies in, early on in the season. Figure out where you want him to be. You know, If you want him to mm-hmm. be a starting pitcher, do you need him later in innings? Can he, can he throw five? Can he be that you know, long-term relief pitcher slash starter? I, I'm a fan of it so far. It's, it's fascinating to me to, to watch him deploy a young guy like that. Would have had his first major league win if it weren't for the bullpen. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. but oh well. Uh, I, I've seen some people mad in the chat, and I understand. I don't want to spend too much time on it because the Cubs have won four straight games. We're six games into the season. They have a four-game winning streak. They swept them. Yeah. It wasn't pretty. At the end, when, when you get to September, you're not going to go, yeah, but they almost blew that game to the Rockies and back. And remember people that game will, in April? They almost blew it. People will forget about how they won this game. It's over. It's a W. 
And if they if they'd if, have lost, you would have remembered it for a different reason. I, I hate to say it, but they're likely to lose against the Dodgers this weekend. And I'm sure when if that when that happens, we will have forgotten how they almost blew it to the Rockies. If that makes anyone feel any better. I'm sure it doesn't in this current moment, but the, whatever. Do you see Sean Caselli in the live YouTube chat with a shot late at night like this at he's me? Been, he's been slandering Luke, us both. Luke, does Ben you. Brown remind you of Charlie Root when he mm. pitched for the Cubs? Now that is unfair. <laughs> I'm, I'm wide awake at 1021. <laughs> I've been up since the break of dawn, and I'm, I'm sitting here hanging with Cody. I may not be doing the beer bat Credit chug. To you. He's, he's pouring it. Again, he's let it warm up a little bit. It's easier to chug that way. You can start taking your wagers on this right now because the uh, dedication is going to be coming here soon. And just for, you know, to be fair, Vegas style, I'm giving you the, the, the information mm. just like it at the racetrack to tell you how the horses did in their previous last two times under 12 seconds. What? Uh, 11 and a half yesterday, according to the and chat. 10 9 4. 10 9 4. Uh, uh, on the Monday. first win. Yeah. Home opener. Well. Uh, uh, Tanya's real confident. She's saying 8.9. Vanilla Chill, 11.2. Tanya's like Casey my. Casey says 11.1. Richard, 12.5. Tanya Ronda is like 12. my biggest supporter. She comes into my Twitter spaces all the time. She's always in my TikTok lives. She's in this YouTube chat. That's She, she has a lot you, of belief in me. So I give her a lot of credit for doing so. <laughs> Hebert 10-2. Evil Wax says 10. We got a lot of people saying 10. Shay saying 10-9. 11-7. Gary Ross. Ugh, man. A lot of pressure. Nobody's saying, nobody's giving you 13 or higher so far that I've seen in the live YouTube <laughs> chat. Now, Cam Ward's expecting something great. 6.9. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, nice. Like, nice, by the way. Yeah. A guy, I... I the problem is that with struggle, what, I, what I struggle with of getting it under like that nine second mark mm -hmm. is that when I get to halfway, I never know when I'm halfway to where then I can right. tip it all the way yep. back. Because again, there is an art to it that if I just go like and pour it all the way back immediately, it's just going to hit my face and then I'm just going to spill it all over. Right. Myself, and then we had the spinning incident and <laughs> I so have to get a again, towel. There is an art about it and i have to realize whenever there's like almost none left to just you know finish it you know? what we don't want is so. you to almost cough it up like the bullpen yeah that's we done now kevin is running the ones and twos tonight kevin wells in mm -hmm. uh do you know do you have the uh timer over there the official timer i do have the stopwatch here but every time i try to use it i screw it up so uh, gonna, all right all right i'm gonna, I'm gonna right, put it i right. am gonna put it up on the screen i'm gonna see if it'll go so Whenever Cody starts, I'll throw it up there. All right. When it the, starts when the beer, as soon when, as I hit I'm, I'm going to do it, too. When the beer hits his lips, you All ready? Right. Yep. Uh, uh, the this, dedication. Go ahead. This beer bat goes to Michael Bush because, uh, mainly because I want Barb to become a fan of him uh, because he had three hits tonight. Uh, and he's been impressive to me at the start of the season. Uh, a lot of, a lot to things to improve on still. They're mainly going to make him face righties instead of lefties. But – I like what we're seeing from him so far this year. And, uh, yeah, take that as a capital. Cody Del Mendo, here's to Bush. Here we go. Here we go. And begin. Cody Del Mendo is underway. He's through the barrel of the bat. He's about halfway point now. Don't cough it up like the bullpen. Here he goes. He's at six seconds, seven seconds, eight seconds, nine, and done. I've got 11.65. I've got 11.65. What do you have, 10, I eight, a, four? I had a 10, eight, four. Yeah, I cut it as soon as I the think foam touched. I think we just round it up and say he, he did about 11 seconds. It's still under 12 again. But it wasn't your fastest of the year. 10.94 no. still. That was impressive, though. Well, you had 10.84. Technically, that could be the fastest one of the season. Well, you know. I stopped it as soon as the foam touched his lips. As soon as I saw all the liquid run out, I cut it. You cut it off. And I will we'll give, give it my... to you. 10.84, fastest of the season. Well, credit to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Credit to me, I didn't screw up Good the stopwatch effort, this time. That All was right. that was heroic, says Baseball Junkie. A lot of people, a lot of people. Yeah, that was definitely a better effort than El Monte. No question about that. <laughs> that was Saya esque Saya esque What do you mean? Seiya oh, you're talking about the guy like had four the RBIs. Chug? Yeah, the chug yeah. was very. Are we going to talk about? You want to talk about the offense first? Or you want to talk about the bullpen? I think people want us to talk about the bullpen. Uh, we probably got to talk factor meals here first. 
think we're about 15 minutes, aren't we? Yeah. Did we say, like, the, did we get new diehards? Yeah, we got one new diehard, by the way. Shout out to our friend Corey, the newest diehard. Shout out, Corey. FOMO, don't miss out. They're coming in droves. We only had one new diehard today, but, you know, we've had, like, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Last month, I think we, what did I say? We had 85 new ones last month, plus almost 300 renewals mm -hmm. uh, that had come up for that month. So, don't Shout miss out. out. Ryan, you get Ryan's newsletter, first one uh, behind the paywall. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's come out. You get the uh, merch, merch. All discounts, takeover discounts. Mm -hmm. You get the free shirt, and we got lots of new shirts out there. Lot, mm -hmm. I mean, lots to pick from for the baseball shirts. Um, so, yeah, we'll talk, we'll talk uh, offense here in a second. Really, an offensive explosion has sort of two things have, have sparked this team to four straight wins. Solid starting pitching and a lot of bats behind him. Really good at bats behind him. That's, that's the way it's been. The defense, eh, not so much yet. Not yeah. so much. I want you guys to eat stress-free this spring with Factor Meals, delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also discover more than 60 add-ons every week like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages that help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and fuel up for your springtime goals. Maybe you're looking for gourmet meals. Try the meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, truffle butter, broccolini, and asparagus. Tailored to your schedule, too. They customize your weekly meals with flexibility to get as much or as little as you need. Pause or reschedule deliveries to suit your lifestyle. I can tell you, I pounded through three or four of these in the last couple days. Oh, Spectacular. Today I, for lunch, I had the garlic chicken. Ooh, that's a good one. Real good. It comes with onion mashed potatoes and green beans. Yeah. Two minutes, and you're eating magic. I'm going to tell you, it's real. I'm, I'm not blowing smoke here. They're really good. Mm -hmm. They're really, really good. Head to factormeals.com slash chgocubs50 and use the code chgocubs50 to get that 50% off. That's code chgocubs50 at factormeals.com slash chgocubs50 to get 50% off. I can't keep them in the fridge. I got six of them last week. They're all gone. They're all gone. My I, my I had the pork, uh, pork bolognese, uh -huh. pork ragu bolognese. Chef's kiss, real good. And I ate my. I finished my box on Monday. I I I'm, you had I six of them in there. Yeah. Did you have Did you have the garlic chicken too? I think so. The garlic yeah. chicken's real good. It is really good. I highly recommend. It, I, I'm not a big on like getting like these types of things delivered to my house, but Factor Meals is my favorite one. They they like they've changed my mind on it. Because it's super easy. All you, oh, you get oh, them, you put you put them in the, the microwave not for two minutes. Yeah, they're not frozen. You put them in the microwave for two minutes, and then they're done. You take the film off, and then you eat it. Like it's it's really that easy. And they're good too. They they they're high quality. So you know what else is high quality? You no, know it goes good with Factor Meals. Blue a moon. nice ice cold blue moon. All right. Uh, there's nothing better than beer and baseball. Right. Friday one twenty beer baseball it all goes together blue moon goes together with all of that right mm -hmm. some beers can say they're brewed for baseball but only blue moon is brewed by baseball beer and baseball just go together and no beer goes better than the one that was literally born in a ballpark blue moon was created at coors field where the rockies play in denver colorado it's the natural choice for opening day in all season long all right um a new baseball season deserves a bold, unique beer from its refreshing flavor from Valencia Orange Peel for a subtle sweetness. I think I said that word right. Subtle. Subtle. Subtle sweetness. Would and you say subtle? I, I can't talk, man. Oh, the, it, there's, the a blue, bee, the there's a bee in that little. one. There's a bee in there. The, yeah, there it's is. It's silent, all right? Uh <laughs> 
Or about the facts getting away of a good story. Don't let the facts get away of a good story. All right, Blue Moon <laughs> Belgian style wheat ale is one of the, is a one of a kind beer that's made brighter. It's carefully crafted and full flavored with refreshing notes and a smooth, creamy finish. Blue Moon was brewed by baseball to give you a dose of nostalgia to give and give you exci- get you excited for a new. Season, it's not just another beer. It's a whole different experience. Why strike out with the same old beer when you can get something one of a kind? It's bold flavor, bright explosion of color, and iconic orange slice ritual guarantee a one of a kind beer experience. Perfect for spring weather. Best served with a signature orange garnish to showcase its beautiful hazy color. A beer this good only comes around once in a blue moon. Ha! But can you enjoy it all season long? Bring the ballpark to you with Blue Moon Belgian style weed ale. It's one of a kind every time. Get Blue Moon delivered by visiting get.bluemoonbeer.com slash chgo to get your delivery options. That's get.bluemoonbeer.com slash chgo. Blue Moon made brighter. Celebrate responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. And I'm going to learn how to talk. Don't worry about it. Listen, if you love a four-game winning streak and you love coming on the show and having a little fun here, and you don't want to just shower us with too much love. You want to be subtle about it. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> then go ahead and hit the like button while you're at it. Please hit the like button. Uh, <laughs> how many blue moons did I have during the eighth inning? I, I wasn't watching, but probably a couple. A couple. Yeah. Probably a couple. I needed a couple to get through the eighth inning tonight. No, factor in Blue Moon. That's a great combo mm-hmm. right there. Yeah. Another good combo scoring 35 runs in four four games. Absolutely. That That's a good combo. But I love the at-bats. Um, the, if, you know, depending on what you guys are into. Like, some people just, just like watching dingers. Some people like watching guys run the bases. I really love watching Mike Talkman take it bats because the guy the amount of times he gets down 0-2 in a count and then gets it back to 3-2 and then works a walk it re- it really gets me going I'm not gonna lie to well, you at some point he'd seen 24 pitches and yeah. in a, like he had two walks and Nico had two walks yep. him and Nico both had two walks and Bush was right ahead of them in the lineup too so like the the that part of the lineup did really well tonight in terms of getting on base and then you know Saya driving guys in Hits that nuke of a homer, like literally. If you didn't have a hard hat on out in left field, I mean, you might have a concussion right now. Um, yeah, I mean, Bellinger's the only one who didn't get on base tonight, and they scored nine runs. Yeah, you that's know? right. Last night it was Amaya was the only guy in the starting lineup that didn't reach base. Tonight it was Bellinger, the only guy in the starting mm-hmm. lineup that didn't reach base. But really, thirty-five runs in four games shows your offense is getting it done. I know it's against the Rockies and one against the Rangers, but Saya is scorching. He had a hot spring mm-hmm. and you know a lot of a lot of people were hot we were high on him last season going before he got hurt in Cactus League play, but going into tonight the stat uh, by Brooksgate on Twitter was that going into tonight's game only six players in baseball had hit a ball 100 miles an hour or more in every game this season. Now, Morell and Saya were two of the six players. Schwarber was one of them, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, did, I don't know if Morell hit one 100 miles an hour tonight. Not tonight. Not tonight. So we Not know tonight. it's down to at least five. Schwarber hit a home run, so I'm going to guess he's still on there. Saya did it right away. And three more hits, four more RBI tonight, and another homer. He's locked in. Yeah. He's locked in. I was so worried at first. First glance when I saw him hobbling after he just... He turned his ankle it, a little just bit. Just tweaked his ankle just a little bit in this cold weather. Played the rest of the game. Was totally fine. Yeah. Um, man, this, this, is, this is a lineup changer if he can... And I know it's a small sample size. I know it's only six games in Cactus League play. But you're also add in the end of last season. Now the sample size is starting to get a little bit bigger. Mm-hmm. It's just a lineup changer if he can be this kind of offensive weapon. Because right now he's playing like an all-star. Yeah, he's definitely making that, making that uh, case early on here, right? Um, and he's getting big hits when the Cubs need it. Hell, the 
you know, the moment you said you talked about him turning his ankle or whatever, yeah. I mean, that was on a play where he drove in two runs and made it, what, four to nothing going into the, I think it was either the second or the third inning. So, you know, he, he really helped the Cubs offense kind of extend that lead a little bit there early on. And I, I, I love his at-bats. Uh, he's always been a professional hitter. I think we've always kind of thought that. Yeah. Um, has a good eye. We always wondered if, like, the if the power could be a little bit more consistent. If, can he get more lift on the ball? There was a stretch last year where when he really struggled, it felt like all he did was hit ground balls. He, like, he, we would always say, oh, man, he hit it 100 miles per hour, but right into the ground. Um, this year he's hitting line drives all over the, the field. You know, that ball that I just mentioned, uh, the two-run single, I mean, he hit that to the opposite field. And then the home run, he – Pulled it to left field, right? So he's he's hitting to all fields. He's hitting the ball hard. And he's, listen, it's been a week. Rangers and the Rockies, whatever you want. But the fact that he's doing well in the situations that he's in, and clearly the Cubs and Craig Council believe in him because if they didn't, he wouldn't be in the two-hole every single night. Uh, you know, it's... It's encouraging to see, and, and we said in the off season, we said in spring training, you know, in the season preview show, like this team can take that big step forward internally if Say Suzuki finally takes that step. Oh, there goes the beer bat. Beer bat's down. Uh, yeah, take, takes that step. Agreed. And you know, makes the case of being an all star or being in that race for one of the best outfielders in the game as far as offense. So. Um. Yeah. Again, it's a, he's off to a great start, and you couldn't have asked for a better one for him for sure. And listen, you can say, "Oh, it's the Rockies," but also you could say, "What if he wasn't hitting as well, and it was against the Rockies?" Right. Yeah. So, but even <laughs> even his even his outs are loud. Yeah, yeah. Right. He's taking he's taking a couple to the warning track. He's hit some hard balls. The guys. He, he's off to a really good start. The offense is off to a pretty good start. You know, I do I have concerns that maybe they're still missing a bat? Yeah, maybe. Maybe, just like I have concerns, same thing with the rotation. But let's see how it all plays out. And this is the group they're going with for now. Yeah. And I said back when we were doing our preview show, I said it's a show-me season for Saya. This is it. He's had... Pieces of seasons where we've said, yes, that's the guy. And he's had pieces of seasons where you look at him and say, I don't know. I don't know if he's the guy. And he's had trouble staying healthy. Right now, knock on wood, healthy and showing you that he can be yeah. even better than what they're like. He could be a tremendous value mm -hmm. in right field for what he's getting paid if he plays like this yeah. on a consistent basis. Yeah. And so... When you think about it, with Saya doing what he's doing and Morell doing what he's doing at the plate, and then you get nights like you did from Michael Bush tonight, like yeah. it's it's more and, than and it, Bellinger. It, and, it's more than just Bellinger. Like how right. many? Like I'm, that's well, look, why they did it tonight without Bellinger. Yeah, nine I, runs. I know. He, well, he, the point what I was getting yeah. what I was trying to make is that like everyone said, oh, this team is the same as last year, and it's like I guess if you look at it on paper. But you also have to factor in new, like the roster is, it does have some new additions on it that are, that at least have higher upside. You you definitely can, can say that. Like Michael Bush is has higher upside than Trey Mancini and Eric Hosmer and anyone else who played first base not named Cody Bellinger last year, right? Garrett Cooper yesterday, right? Um, so the the offense, it certainly has improved certainly has all kinds of reason to be able to be better than last year. You, you're what you're hoping for, at least what I'm hoping for is for it to consistently be fine all season, because last year we would go through stretches where it looked like the best offense in baseball, but then it would go through like a month stretch of just being awful. You know, like last April, the offense was great, but then may hit and their offense was awful. <laughs> And June was like a roller coaster. And then July, it was great. 
and then <laughs> August was great, and then September it was dead. You know what I mean? Like, you need more – you just need consistency through, from the offense all season long. Like, know what you're going to get from everyone all season long. No, you know, l- listen, great highs are awesome, but the big thing is, is, like, if when you go through your lows, like, as long as it's not so low to where it's hurting the team, you can, and you can get through it, great. So, so far, the offense, to me – I wouldn't say it's even at peak form. Like, Nico hasn't really got it going yet. I mean, he has walked four times in the last two days, but he, you're, you haven't seen him, you know, hit the way that we saw him hit last year, right? Right. Uh, Gomes hasn't got it going with the bat yet uh, compared to last year. Um, you know, I think, honestly, right now, it's like those top five guys who are really the ones who are hitting um, five top five, six. And it feels like after that, it's like, ah, what are you going to get? Like, again, Talkman just giving you great at-bats, walking, but also just, again, giving you great at-bats, making pitchers throw pitches. Um, Garrett Cooper in the platoon role with Bush has been great so far. Like, there's a lot of things to really like. Will all of that happen all season long? I don't know. Probably not. But as long as it – when it goes through his downs, it's not so much of a down that it leads to five, six game losing streaks. You know what I mean? Like you just need some consistency throughout the lineup. And I think that five, those five first five, six guys in the lineup are good enough to keep this offense afloat all season. Yeah. I mean, they have, they were the number six offense last year, Mm -hmm. but I think the question both at the end of the year and the off season and the beginning of the year was, Will they have? Do they still have enough thump? Because the thought process was they need to add a couple of big bats. Now I don't know if Bush is going to live up to that hype and be that guy, or or who it might be. But you do have some, Mm -hmm. like for instance, they didn't have a. We talked about in the off season. They don't have a thirty home run guy. They didn't have a haven't had a forty homer guy since D Lee. Yeah. So where are they going to get it right now? Say is looking like he could be a thirty home run guy. Morell looks like he could be a thirty home run guy. And if Bellinger is healthy all season. He's going to get his cracks, too. So you may have more power in this lineup than you think you do. And, yeah, the reinforcements could be there if you need them. I've seen people saying, talk about Owen. I don't think Owen Casey's coming up yet. Well, not anytime soon. Right? Yeah, I, no I, I know him. he's doing great, but it's, no that, that's, good. Great, that, yeah. that's good to have. Yeah. He's, he's off to a hot start at AAA. Hey, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Let let keep that going, but hopefully you don't have to force and he, you let those guys <laughs> the, simmer. The thing about Owen Casey too is like half the chat is also saying that you can't play Morell at third base anymore. But if you want Owen Casey, you got to play Morell at third base. That's right. If you want the flexibility, you got to play Morell at third base. So pick a side. All right, the, rant over. The thing I'll say about <laughs> Suzuki last thing is Watching the top three in this lineup, six games in, every starting pitcher that is going to have to face Ian Happ, Seiya Suzuki, and Cody Bellinger, it's not the best three in all of baseball, no. but man, those dudes are going to make you work. Each of those guys taking pitch after pitch after pitch, working full counts. I mean, that's going to be a huge thing as the season progresses. I mean, Already we're seeing all three of those guys comfortable with taking walks, half especially. But if you're going to take that many pitches to start the season, I mean, that's really going to wear down a lot of these starting pitchers and could really work in their favor in terms of frustration on the other side. So and Quantrill was out of the game, what, after four? Yeah, he had like 90 pitches in like yeah. five innings. I mean, he looked they, good in the first inning, and then at that second inning, the Cubs offense just like that, figured him out like that, that's right a, that. Big and strength he, of this team. He's not as bad as Kyle Freeland, but man, he he didn't he walked like three or four guys in that second inning. It, yeah, they they can be this offense can be a little pesky in terms of working walks, just keeping the line moving. They don't have like a Juan Soto or a Pete Alonso in that lineup, right? At least based Yet. off what we know. Yes, no, I'm, I'm of course. Sorry, I'm you're gonna you're gonna trigger everyone in the I chat, know. Luke. Sorry, Barb. <laughs> but <laughs> but Late, I'm sorry, Barb. <laughs> but they have guys who can keep the line moving, whether it's via the walk or, you know, just getting the base hit. Um, but every now and then they will need that home run. And 
we saw, again, we saw it at times last year. They would go through stretches where they could get that, but it just wasn't consistent. So that's, I think that's the big question with the offense this year is if you can just stay afloat for most of the season without going through some deep, deep struggles offensively as a full team. And, you know, when the offense really does struggle, maybe that is when Owen Casey might get that chance. I, I don't know. But I, I'm just saying that they – right now it feels like there is more options offensively for this team unlike last year where it didn't mm-hmm. feel like that. It was like Bellinger or bust, you know. Bellinger, Morrell, Swanson, Horner or bust, you know. Right, exactly. early on you didn't even have Morrell. I, I saw yeah. Niren, uh earlier in the chat saying what I was saying last night. you got to survive like 50 games – yeah. Without Steele and Tyone, this isn't even necessarily about just the offense. It's about grinding this out for, a, like, on paper, you guys should be, the Cubs should be in big trouble. On paper, they should be in big trouble the first part of the season. And, you know, there's teams that are off to horrible starts. Mm-hmm. Cubs are fortunate not to be off to a horrible start right now. They're 4-2. Yeah. and two. They're 4-2 and two without their top two pitchers. Yeah. That's a decent place to begin right now. And now we'll see with them what they are really made of potentially when they face the Dodgers. Do you want to say something, Kevin? Yeah, exactly one year ago, just talking about the offense to wrap it up. Trey Mancini, four yep. at-bats. Tucker Barnhart, three at-bats. And Eric Hosmer, five at-bats. Exactly one year ago today when yeah, they Burrell played wasn't the, even the here Reds. yet. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that lineup – what a difference a year makes. I mean, you had three guys. And somehow the you offense had three, was good in April. And say it was Yeah, hurt. they were hitting Well, you April. know who it was? Patrick Wisdom. Yeah. The whole month was Patrick Wisdom. If yeah. you take Patrick Wisdom's April out of their April, that team was yeah. bad. Swanson and Horner had great months Yeah, of April didn't too. he have like a, did he have 11, 12 home runs? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just looking at an offense and a bunch of black holes in a lineup from a year ago today, and I'm looking at a lineup now that has a lot of depth and a lot of options. I like it. I like it a lot. I'll tell you what I like. Prize picks and daily fantasy sports, Cody. Oh, I like to I like to dabble man. in that. To dabble a little. Any, I think doing a little home like a home run prize picks entry yeah. can make you a lot of money. If I finally hit on a home run prize picks entry, I won't have to do this show anymore and I can just go right off into the sunset. There it is. Um and I love writing that hope every single day. <laughs> every single day. Came really close two nights ago. Uh, but <laughs> I didn't have one of the guys, right? Price Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. The easiest and most exciting way to play DFS is just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Spring training is over and baseball season is officially underway. Don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond in your prize picks entries, whether it's, sorry, I can't talk. Strikeouts, RBIs, or first inning runs. Take your pick, more or less, and add them to your prize picks entry. Like I said, whether like I, I was talking about home runs, you know, you could do uh, you know hits. You could do I get RBIs, you know, strikeouts. If you had, if there was a, one, I didn't I didn't do a prize picks entry tonight, but I'm I wonder if there was something for Ben Brown or Albert nice. Azale who had two strikeouts in the ninth inning tonight. You know, like I. I'm, Clutch I'm, performance I, yeah. by Alzali, too. The options are endless, right? Uh, so you, too, can see those endless options. If you go to prizepicks.com slash CHGO and use code CHGO for first deposit matchup to $100, that's prizepicks.com slash CHGO and use code CHGO. Pick more. Pick less. It's that easy, Luke. Uh, Mike Dubs in the live YouTube chat says, Prize picks is great. Won some money. Help me pay for my stay at Hotel Zachary on the 20th when I go to the game. Hell yeah, Dubs. Credit wow, to looks, you. Looks like the Credit beers, uh, the Blue Moons will be iced in the tub yeah. at the Hotel Zachary. Man, he Coming must have won a lot of money if he was able to Hotel stay at the Zachary. Hotel Zachary. I can't wow. afford to stay there, brother. Shit. Can I come Dubs, stay? You can stay Dubs at my apartment a, for the weekend. Dubs is making a living on <laughs> prize picks. Uh, yeah, Dubs, you can stay at my apartment for the weekend. I'll stay at the hotel. Is that like you you the whole apartment? <laughs> yeah. you just, all you have to do is watch somebody's dog. That's all you have to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you, CD1 Price Cleaners, customers save over 30% on their dry cleaning bill by switching 
to CD One Price Cleaner. Simple, transparent service. Other cleaners charge a different price for every garment type. Plus, they have up charges, and they may give a different price each time you visit. At CD One Price Cleaners, we change everything. One low price for any garment. Yep, even those sports jerseys, you're going to have to get there, dry clean, get them done. Same one low price. Fast turnaround, too. CD One Price Cleaners has your order ready. Same day you drop it off or the next day. That's it. Other cleaners take two, three, four, five days to get your garments ready. Not City One Price Cleaners. And they send you a text when it's done. Text message alerts. So six hours after you drop those shirts off for dry cleaning, all of a sudden, phone buzzes, text alert, come get your dry cleaning. They do wash and fold laundry. They do blankets and comforters and tailoring alterations. They do leather cleaning, Kevin, and also area rug cleaning, which is nice. Kevin's got some chaps that got, he's going to get. I was going to say, you got some leather pants. Yeah, got to get those cleaned up for the summer. Uh, visit chgo.cd1.com. That's O-N-E dot com. Link in the description. Once you're there, you can pick from an in-store coupon or online pickup and delivery coupon options. Got one right by my house. I like to drop them off there, and like I said, that's it. It's yeah. that day or the next day. You don't have to be like... So when you want something... Maybe you have a special event. And you're like, I, I have this dress shirt that I've got to wear to this wedding. You know you're going to get it quickly returned. So they, they help you out when you're in a jam. Or they help you out if you just want to drop in, drop off the laundry and have it folded. It's awesome. Man. I need to take my rug there. I have I, a rug in my apartment. I, I, I need, need to, to start doing the wash and fold laundry. Because mm. I've been doing the wash the laundry... And wait a week to fold the laundry. And it just yeah. is in a basket. Pile, the pile keeps getting higher and higher. Mine's not even the basket. I just throw it on the floor. It just hits the floor. <laughs> it just, yeah. I just pour it because I and need then the, the dog basket. That and then the dog that you're watching goes over there and lays in it. And by the time you get to go to it, it's got... Uh, I got my bedroom door shut All so right. she can't get in there. Uh, Godfather asked how much a hotel room was at Hotel Zachary. <laughs> Way too damn much. Uh, at least 300, I'm right? I'm trying to figure it out right now. A lot of sold out say, rooms this week. I would weekend. say 400. Yeah, it's at least $400. I look I went and looked one time like a year I ago. I haven't looked in a long time. It's probably cheaper now than it will be in the summer. Yeah. 493 this Saturday. 493 for, for the, the Dodgers? Room. Yeah, 371 on Sunday, 265 on Monday. Yeah, that's that's uh so cheaper during the week. Five twenty six on, the on April twenty fourth. Yeah. When's Dubs coming in? Four seventy four. He, the, he, the 20th. Oh. Yeah. he made a lot Dubs. of money on prize he made picks. A lot of money Attaboy. on prize picks. Credit to Dubs again. Dubs, and you spell yeah. that with an S. That's a dollar sign, not an S. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. So we're hoping Ryan Herrera is going to be able to join us from beautiful historic Wrigley Field. Dubs says six hundred a night for a view looking at Wrigley. I mean. Listen, man, sometimes you got to splurge a little bit, all right? I'm not going to... You only live I, once. I don't have the money to spend... I don't have the money to put 600 to stay at Hotel Zachary, but listen, I know my man Dubs, he's a, he's a, he's a smart fellow. So I got to tell you, $600 a night man. hotel, I better be hanging over the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> like when you're outside... I better be hovering over the ocean. I want a bathtub. Yeah. I, yeah. I want the floor of the entire place to be glass, and I want to see the ocean underneath right. me. Yeah. I want to see hammerheads swimming below me. You can get a me. really good view. Like, I, I can imagine the view looking at Wrigley Field from Hotel Zachary is nice. So, But you sh you, for 600 bucks, probably should yeah, get Yeah, I mean, the ballpark the doesn't move. Yeah, yeah. It's still there. Yeah. I guess a mountain doesn't move in the All ocean. I know is when uh, Dubs sort of. comes to Chicago, he better invite me so I can go see this room. I, I was going to say Dubs. <laughs> Hit us up. Hit us up. I gotta see. I gotta see. Uh, I gotta see. I'll be the guy running. Dubs has the you know the internet thing where he's got the flag and he's running down his street, right? Yeah. I'll I'll carry that flag running down the hallways of Hotel Zachary. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sleep in the tub. Uh, so okay. hopefully Ryan's going to be able to join us. We'll see. Uh, you want You want to talk? Uh, he's going to have the latest on Tyone. You want to talk the morale stuff real quick? Because you the were getting upset at the... At I am upset about it because I'm just so tired of talking about here's it. Here's the thing. Like, I know, I know we're going to talk about it every night. <laughs> I know because... This, this is like... Because most likely oh, he's going to have a big hit or yeah. an air or both every night. Every night. Tonight, it was a throw that was bad. And, and actually, Kevin was asking me about Sean... Something, somehow Sean Dunstan got brought up tonight. I'm like... Mm -hmm. 
there is there is sort of a, a connection in my brain mm-hmm. for Sean Dunstan's career watching him as a kid and Christopher Morrell now, both super electric and athletic. Okay. Morrell's got more power than Dunstan. Dunstan had this rocket arm that he wanted to on, on every play he wanted to throw it through Mark Grace. He wanted to go through the first baseman with the throw, and it was like, just throw it over there, man. Because sometimes He'd throw it 150 miles an hour into the stands. You'd be like, oh, okay. So I don't think that's Morrell's problem. I don't know what it is, but they're trying to develop a player. Baseball has changed. They're not develop. They're trying to get these cheaper players. And in this case, it's not that Morrell's cheap. It's that his bat is so powerful mm-hmm. that they've got to find a way to get him in their line. He's one of the best bats, if not the best bat, in the organization. So the defense isn't there. Something in, in, his, in, in his development, never found a position, didn't hone in, didn't find his craft defensively. So they're trying to develop this player. How many times in Chicago sports have we complained they never developed their own – like? How many times have we complained about it? Whether it's the Bulls or the Bears or the Cubs. Like, how many times do you have to say, they don't develop, they do a terrible job of developing their own guys. All right, this guy's up. They're working on his offense. He's spectacular. He, yeah, he's got to chase a slider, but the power's there. They're giving him... The best way to, for him to develop this is not to go back to AAA and play meaningless games where he doesn't care if he chucks it into the stands and there's no pressure. He's got to do it here at the major league level. And until it puts your team in a horrible position, and likely it won't right now because he's hitting so well, you can live with it, you let them go about developing because it's the best thing for the team. The best thing for this team, you said, how do you get Owen Casey here? Morell playing third base. Yeah, because if he's your DH, Owen Casey's got nowhere to play right now. Yep. And I also said yesterday that he I'm not asking Morell to play every single day at third base, but at least a few days a week while we're in this transition. And if, I'm with most people in the chat. Like, it's frustrating. Of course, whenever he airmailed that ball tonight, I was frustrated. But you can't you can't just decide that it's not gonna that you you just cold turkey it after one week. Actually, it hasn't even been a week. It hasn't even been right. a week. So that that's what's honest. Like I'm frustrated with the overreaction to it. I understand in some aspects because some of the plays have been bad. Like one against the Rangers, where it was the glove, not even the throwing accuracy. This that time he it was literally a line drive, basically hit right to him, and he didn't catch it. It went to the outfield, and I think it led to a Rangers run tonight. He fielded the ball. But he airmailed it, and that is, that's been the biggest issue with him. That's what everyone has said, whether it's the footwork, whether it's the throwing, like the throwing accuracy. You know, if there was any positive, it was literally the play after he airmailed it, I'm pretty sure, another ground ball was hit to him, and he made a perfect throw to Bush. All right? So did his airmail throw, uh, air throw lead to a run tonight for the Rockies? Yes. Was it the reason? If I guarantee, if the Cubs would have lost this game, everyone would have came in the chat and been like, "Morale's the reason we lost the game." Even though Nico freaking did that flip uh, in the eighth inning that he shouldn't have done, and also the fact that Almonte just wasn't very good, and then Naris didn't make it any better. Uh, had nothing. To, none of that had anything to do with Morel. They were up five runs, but I guarantee most people would have came in the chat and blamed Morel for the loss. The point is, is like I'm with you. Like it, I just if it's happening in June, I said it's going to be a number. Like this, this is not. It matters because you, we'd be mad. I personally would be mad if if David Ross was here and wasn't playing him because it's a young guy and he's making mistakes and it, yeah. I don't want to see it. I'd rather have a veteran over there, some guy who's been there forever and is at the end of his career. We don't want that either. And I. I, I hear you. I, I, see, I, I see the people in the chat. I see the people on Twitter saying, not another game. I can't take it. Should never happen. It's 162 games. I, I, I'm just as frustrated seeing. I, I feel bad for him when I see it. I, I know what you're saying. But the only way for him to be better at it, 
Council is saying, listen, I'm not going to judge him by one game. Mm -hmm. This is the way the Cubs are approaching it. They've decided we have to find a position for him. And I'm, I, DH will always be there. Yeah. But we're not going to judge it on one game. We're going to give him till June, maybe they said. And if he's not better in June than he was in April, then maybe we make that decision. But the best thing for Morrell right now as a baseball player is to find him a spot. Yeah. Got to work through the kinks. It's, you got to live with it. You got to do if, it. You got to do it. If the Cubs <laughs> didn't have an Owen Casey or an Alexander Canario or, I don't know, Mervis, whoever else, even Bush, because at some point PCA will be on this roster, meaning that the Cubs will have to play Bellinger at first some as well, yes. which then means you can move Bush to DH. If, it's another thing. Like, a guy who had three hits tonight. If they didn't have tonight. all these other dudes, then yeah, I'd probably be more on the end of like, you got to DH this guy every day. But right now is the time that you have to play him if you care about getting some opportunities for some of their high-end prospects. Right. That yeah. is the right. fact of the matter. Exactly. It, that is the, like, the, the biggest thing. That's what, honestly, in the grand scheme of things, Brennan said it on Sunday's show. He wants, he, he did, honestly, well, I think he cares about playoffs, but at the end of the day, he wants to be going into 2025 ab with like cost controlled, like guys under control, <laughs> like a full <laughs> roster of them, basically guys that you know who are going to be here, who you're going to build around. And a lot of those are guys who are going to be making their debuts this year or someone like a PCA who got a little cup of coffee last year. Like we got to find out about some of these dudes. He's not going to get to 122 errors because they'll stop it before that point comes. Sure. We don't desperately need him at DH yet. You desperately need him in the lineup. Yeah. That much I agree with. And again, but what I you re again, the best thing for the team is that this guy learns how to play average third base. I and again, Council is giving him the quick hook. That's the right way to do it. When a game's defensively on the line, you take him out of there and you put Madrigal over at third. And he's not even starting at third every game. They're trying to find the right matchups that help you. He did it tonight. None of the errors have really cost him this season. It they really have it, it hurt him tonight. The th overthrow hurt them. They tonight. didn't lose the game. No, they didn't lose. But I, think I, that, I agree with Godfather that, when it starts costing is. you critical games. Then, yes. then the, the experiment's over. But right now, it's early in the season. Live with some mistakes from a young player. I think everybody sees the you writing may, on the wall there. I think it will cost them a game at some point, and I maybe a couple, it, and that's why it will. But that's. You gotta, I'm with you, I, but I but see where the But him learning to play average from. third base may win you way more games than those few errors may cost you, and, and especially in a season where I don't think they're winning the World Series anyway. I think that's exactly how they view it, is we can use this as a developmental year for that position. Why not? That's basically yes, what I just kind of said. Not gonna, yeah. He's not going to learn the things he needs to learn under pressure just doing them before the game, just mm -hmm. doing them at AAA. He needs the pressure of... Marquee watching, all of us watching, Major League Baseball watching, the full ballpark watching. That's all part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you said it best when it comes to what, like the n not being able to develop players, right? Yeah, like you that, got it. And I'm not saying that this, this is, a is development. Like, sure, the Cubs front office in some aspects probably sees this as a developmental year. But I truly do believe the Cubs are trying to develop while also win at the same time. And there, there, there's, there's a what's, – what's the – got to balance that in a way, right? It's hard to egg. do that. Yeah. You, it's hard to balance that. And we saw that in the second half of last year, right? Cause, and I know David Ross is the manager. And, yeah, he probably should have played some young guys more, obviously, right? Instead of just the guys who got us here. But, like, once they – fully believed on getting into the they could get into the playoffs they they played they didn't take any risks they didn't they didn't play guys like morell at third base because you know of development so right again right now is the time to to give this some run again and i don't know how many more times i gotta say that like it's the only if you can figure this out now it potentially allows you to give chances to other guys down mm -hmm. the road and, and, use, and utilize the DH role and have more flexibility on the roster. I just think that's so important. 
for this roster in particular. I'm just curious. Unless how this team's going to make a massive trade, and then we can sit here and bitch about the Cubs trading Owen Casey or Alexander Canario or whoever else, and then bitch about that. I guess we can do that instead of bitching about Morrell playing third. I, I, Corey says he cringes <laughs> every time he has a ball hit to him. I, well, I understand that. I understand, understand the anxiety of, of <laughs> and I'm just telling you, they're trying to develop a young player. Not all development is at the plate. This time yeah. it happens to be in the field, and he's such a good bat. They're yeah. trying to find a spot for him at the field before they just say, stick him at DH. Because yeah. there's a lot of guys you can just stick at DH. All right, Ryan Herrera is ready to go from beautiful Stark Wrigley Field. Cold Wrigley Field. Ryan looks cold. Yeah. Looks like he, were you just out shoveling? Might as well have been. Yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> it was cold in here. Uh, I was gonna. I was gonna. Well, I hopped in and I was gonna comment on. It sounds like we're yelling about. I wanted to bring up that I like opened the chat as I was walking up, and the first thing I read was Barb saying that when Cody gets angry, he's the devil incarnate. What What did Cody <laughs> do to Barb? I don't know. I did dedicate the beer bat to Michael Bush today, and I said I'm dedicating it to Michael Bush because he had a good game, and I want Barb to like him. So, and and by the way, I think Ryan will back this up. As bad as that throw was over to first base, he made a nice play along the wall over his shoulder too. Morell, yeah, oh yeah, he, made, he did yeah. make a nice defensive that was early, play in that the game. Was, so and, and, he made two. De- he he made two good defensive plays. Obviously, the air the. Th- throwing air we was remember bad, the but, air more, yes, yeah. but the other play was nice, and I, I the highs and lows Again, are going to come. It's a roller coaster. It's a roller well, coaster. I think, I think it was good to see him like immediately after that air get like a very similar play um, and and make the routine play. Like, it's I'm not going to praise him for making a routine play. Right, they're called routine play pr- routine plays for a reason, and he should if he's going to be at third base and make those plays. But it was good to see that after that air. You know, flush that one, get the next one. He goes out and actually makes the play. Like that's if he's if you're gonna yeah, you call it a roller coaster. That's kind of what it is with Morel right now. If you're gonna ride it, you need to see him at least. You know, as the the, the lows of the roller coaster, you need to see see that kind of go up a little bit more too. And so, coming back and making that routine play, like yeah, it was good to see that because he, he didn't let that the error that he made affect affect him on the next one. I think it, it's. I don't know. It, it's going to be. I, I agree with you guys. It's going to be. It's going to be a while till we really have a firm idea like where where morale's at. But it's it is a roller coaster right now. And it's not. It's not something. It's not something you guys in 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 the press after the game have to even ask Craig Council right now. After every error, it doesn't have to be when when are you going to give the morale the hook. That's the idea. They're trying to give him a show of confidence. That, like, listen, don't worry about one game. We're giving you this big sample size to, Im- to see improvement. And it's not, you were bad tonight. You, if it was Ross, an heir, he might come out the next game. Like, that's the way old school was thinking. Baseball's changed. Players get here faster, and they're not perfect players when they get here. They're trying to fix Morrell's defense and find a spot to play. How about uh, Jamison Tyone? Because we saw pretty nice, pretty nice outing from Ben Brown. And Luke Little, the two combining at the top. But, you know, it'd be good to have Tyone back and pitching well, too. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, Tyone seems to be on the mend. I believe it. Uh, you know, talk to Craig Council pregame. Um, you know, Tyone threw a live BP yesterday, so um, Tuesday. And Council talked about that. It, you know, all the feedback that he got from it was that it was good and they're on track. Uh, for Tyone to make his first rehab start uh, Sunday, um, not or with Double A Tennessee versus Triple A Iowa, just as a weather-related reason, um, but that he's you know on track to to make that start Sunday, and I think the I think the expectation is that it will be multiple uh, rehab outings, not a set number it's, it's probably going to depend on like obviously how the first one goes does he need a second one okay how does the second one go right um but I, I mean you're looking you're probably looking at him i think the the a good scenario would be him returning at the end or near the end of that uh that the, the road trip they're going on this nine game road trip um so still a little bit of time but you're they're getting close they're getting close to tyon coming back and when we talk about just you mentioned Ben Brown and Luke Little having to step up and, you know, a couple of really young guys, inexperienced guys at this level. 
um, stepping up and giving the Cubs basically five strong innings. I know the bullpen shaky later on, but uh, those five giving or those two giving five good innings for the Cubs. Um, bringing Jamison Tyone back is going to be helpful in just stabilizing things. I think I think that the end of his season when we started seeing a little bit more of the Tyone that uh, you know pre Cubs. Uh, I think that was real, and I think he can continue on with that. Obviously, this uh, back injury has disrupted the start to his year, and he's take a little bit more time to work back. But um, I, I do think he'll come back and, and be able to help this rotation with Steele out. Did they? Was there any talk after the game about obviously the bullpen troubles, and then yet still being able to get the sweep? Because I, I, well, yeah. I, tomorrow I won't remember the bullpen struggles. <laughs> I, I've, I've forgotten it already. They won. It's a W. Yeah, I mean, I think um, you know, Craig Council afterwards talks, you know, asked about just the roller coaster of the game. Apparently, we're talking about roller coaster with Morrell. The game itself, by the end of it, was a was a roller coaster. Um, and you know, he, he he mentions the the conditions out there for both teams. I mean, you saw both teams making errors, making mistakes, str- uh, struggling at various points. The, the conditions were rough. Man, it was cold. It was. I mean, intermittently rain, snow, like it was, it was a horrible, horrible environment for a baseball game. Like I, I, the crowd, I think they announced 29,000 something and it wasn't even close to that. Like literally not even close to that. They so, meant 2,900. <laughs> it might've been even, it might've been less than that. It might've been yeah. less than that. But um, no, I think it's um, so like, you know, Craig Council mentions all that and, and just the environment around this game. Um. Uh, it's it's one of those things where you know you're you're the Cubs are a better team than the Rockies. We know that they sh- they they need to be showing that. And yes, the bullpen blew the lead. It was a six run lead going into the seventh, and um, you know the Rockies come out and tie it on the top of the eighth. But you know you have Miles Mastroboni, you know striking out and what they call I think it was a foul tip or, or it was a, not going to be a foul tip, but striking out on a on a drop third strike, getting the first, you know taking home on a chopper over to third. Uh, you even look back earlier in the game, like that reminded me of the Mike Talkman play. You know, ball gets away from, I think it was the pitcher, or gets past the catcher at home, and he he scores, right? So, um, yeah, you you have the elements, you have all this randomness that could happen when it's raining or snowing, but, you know, that's happening for both sides. So you still got to battle through it, and you still got to find a way to win. Cubs are a better team than the Rockies. They did that today. And so, you know, it's the Rockies, but it, a sweep, especially coming off dropping two or three in Texas on the road to start the year, like that's that's a good it's a good way to go into this off day. You know, get, everyone gets a rest now, and obviously you have a pretty big uh, test in the Dodgers coming up. Uh, a lot of people in the chat, or a couple of people in the chat, saying I'm uh, Gary was saying I'm crazy and Robbie about where Merriweather should be. I, I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying I'm not going to stress about it because. <laughs> and the bullpen's not going to be perfect every day. The conditions aren't going to be perfect every day. Guys aren't going to pitch. In the, the, do I think Merriweather's a setup guy? Yes. But he gave up a run tonight. Did mm-hmm. he not? Did Merriweather give up a run? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so, like, forget about it. They won. I'm not going to freak out about a bullpen that gave up six runs because they won the game. Now, if they do it four games in a row, now you got a pattern. Tonight it was yeah. bad conditions. The bullpen wasn't great. They still got the win. Al Zalai came in and got the job done. Yeah. Can't, can't you be happy about that? I am happy about okay, it. Okay, good. You know what else you could be happy about, Ryan? I should mention this. It was the perfect night to have that game time app. Super low prices. Roll the dice. It's postponed. You go on game time. Now you got yourself the deal of the year for the makeup game. Just throwing it out there for you. But I love game time all the time, all year. That's where I get my tickets. I'm currently playing the waiting game on Sebastian Maniscalco stand-up ticks for the, in the fall coming up here at the United Center. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. Killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, the lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying Major League tickets. We've got the first the, uh, Friday 120 Club coming up this Friday. All you got to do is... Get your bleacher ticket on game time, then join Cody and Braggs at Murphy's for the meetup. Take over the left field bleachers this Friday against the Dodgers. Uh, harass Shohei Itani if you want, respectfully, of course. Whoever's playing left field. 
for the Dodgers. That's right. Last minute mm-hmm. deals save up to sixty percent off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedies, theater. Uh, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time for a limited time. All users can get twenty dollars off any Major League Baseball purchase of one hundred and fifty dollars or more in the Game Time app with the code First Pitch. That's F I R S T P I T C H. Terms apply. That's code First Pitch. For $20 off from March 25th till April 14th. So you still got time here in April. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I'm telling you, Friday, that's a good one. The weather's going to be starting to warm up a little bit this weekend. Wait it out. Join Cody and Braggs with your bleacher ticket. Maybe go get that uh, Friday 120 Club shirt over at allchgo.com and go into the locker, mm-hmm. dial it up. Uh, by the way, speaking of event, that's that's an exciting event we have coming up, the inaugural first ever Friday 120 Club. But we also have celebrate the historic CHGO Bears draft in memorable fashion coming up on the 25th. Join the guys and former Bear Corey Wooten and other diehards for a special CHGO Bears live show during the draft at Joe's on Weed Street. That's Thursday the 25th, Friday the 26th, presented by Circus Sportsbook and. Casa Azul on Friday the 26th we will have a special appearance from Gary Fence at good old number 45 and our friends at Collectors Cave offering tickets for autographed pictures and jerseys CHGO is going to be giving away merch diehard memberships gift cards much more head to our events page at allchgo.com for tickets this is selling fast right now so get your tickets before they're sold out bears with the first pick and the ninth pick On that first day, go to allchgo.com to learn more about our free Cubs Friday 120 Club as well. Cubs and Sox takeovers, golf tourneys, and much, much more coming up this summer. Uh, Okay. You want to talk who you got, or do you want to talk about real quick? I I, want to ask Ryan. Okay, yeah. If you did, and this is only, this isn't even for the chat, this is for me, because I have anxiety. Did you you talk to Al Monte? Oh, boy. No, we didn't no? talk to him. All right, it. then I'm going to continue to have my own anxiety. I can't ask you anything about Almonte. Yeah, you had to ask me a guy I'm worried about in the bullpen, he'd be the first guy. Sure, yeah. If you said, who gives me a little uh, peptabismal anxiety, mm-hmm. that I would mean, be the guy. It would not be Hector Neris yet. If we're, if we're talking about having anxiety, I mean, he he went in an 8-3 game in the eighth inning, right? Like, I, he's not – I don't think – as far as the pecking order of that back end of that bullpen goes, I, I don't think he's high on the list, so – uh, as, as far as having anxiety for the bullpen, one I, I don't know that you need that. The, the only I don't thing know that that's the guy you need. The only guy, like the only thing that really worried me about him is that he walked two dudes. He struck out. He had two strikeouts. He walked two dudes, and the hits that he gave up, they were hit really hard. Nolan Jones single, 107 miles per hour. Were some guys left in too long? Like I think in some aspects maybe Council like pushed it a little too bit too long with him, but it was eight to three. He's trying to. I don't know, trying to give the guy a little bit of a leash, try to earn some some time, I guess. I don't know. I, the thing is here is that obviously Craig Council knows what he is doing or else, you know, we'd still have David Ross, right? Well, you're still going to have blown. It's not like but the yeah. Brewers didn't have blown saves. Right. right. It's not like the Brewers bullpen never mm-hmm. lost a game. Yeah. yeah. Now, the, and also, like, the defense that he, inning was awful, specifically Nico Horner with the, you know, the little flip to Bush or whatever that he basically air mo- air mailed. Um, I I think Barb in the chat earlier said that Talkman should have had that ball that was hit by Tovar. <laughs> I looked it up on Baseball Savant. It had a 730 expected batting average, and he hit it 102 miles per hour. So that tells me that that was a very tough ball to get, and that's what I thought originally. But I went to check just to just to let y'all know. Um, CB Buckner, and I I think the ball hit by Tovar by that time. Neris was already Buckner. in, but yeah. Anyway, I you don't like you don't like blowing eight to three leads, even though you won. You don't no. like doing it. No. Hopefully, it doesn't become a trend. That's my thing. Just don't let it become a trend. You really don't like blowing eight three leads, eight to two leads mm-hmm. when you lose. True. Yeah, but it, it you but can they swall- you, you can take it when they win yeah. the game, and they right. did. So uh, and, yeah, and you, you all, swallow, you also, I think you can swallow it. And you can swallow it, and you also. You know, you you have to realize it's six games into the season. Like mm-hmm. just overanalyzing and and worrying about 
stuff that when it's so when it's so early in the season, like that's that's kind of a recipe to like <laughs> to to make yourself go crazy. Ah, um, that's what we do. I, yeah, I, I get it, but that's it's what, also that's our... like, but it's also the fact that they are six. You know, it's six games into the season, right? right. Like they're like One nothing four. is a trend yet. It's the smallest of sample size that you can have basically through an entire season. So, and with Cody, like if things become a trend, like that's when you really start analyzing it and, and worrying about it and, and really asking the questions about it. But when it's, you know, it, it's a blown lead in a game they ended up winning anyway, um, you, you you can flush that one and, and and see where they go on Friday, see how they go Saturday, see, like, see how things line up and see how they do moving forward. I'd, and, and I don't have a problem talking about it. Like, if we want to talk about it, well, I'm not telling everybody how to cub, but, like, I just didn't want this entire post-game show after four straight wins to be Morell has to be the DH and the bullpen's the worst. Like, can you enjoy four straight wins? Yeah, they scored I am. 34 runs in four games. 35 no. runs in four games. They've won four in a row. Let's not just find the negative in everything. That's very big of you to say, considering you're I'm the, the one who's the most old man. You're the most That's pessimistic the person How on the show. How late is it? It's 1130 almost. <laughs> you're the most pessimistic person on this show, and you're telling us to be positive. That's right. I'm saying so, it's late, and I'm, very I'm big still positive. Very big I'm of even you more do. positive because I won who you got. Let's take a look at the results. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah. There were some good performances. Horner had a couple of walks. Now, Bellinger didn't have a great night. Bush obviously had an argument. Corey wanted us to acknowledge his Bush. And we are. Bush, Bush has been acknowledged. Corey, your love for Bush has been acknowledged. And we're there with you. He had, what was it, three hits tonight? Yeah, three, yeah, hits. three hits for Bush. Three hits Why you got to do that in front of 250 live people? <laughs> but uh, if Corey, but, if Corey but has a say choice. a Suzuki, four RBI and three hits. And another home run, home run wins it. So one might say, yeah, me, yeah. you know, I took Nico tonight because everyone's down on him. I've seen some, I've seen some Nico slander in the chat. Might have to take Nico again on Friday. It's it's really stupid slander, but I might have to do it. People are down on him, and well, his air tonight was bad, but he did walk twice. So, which is for Nico is like we've talked it's about. Good. It's good. Four walks in two games. Four walks. Yeah. Four walks yeah. in two games. It's very good. Good signs. The hits will come. And I know the defense will be better because Dansby had that really bad air in Texas, and he's been really good since defensively. And Nico will not make that dumb of a play again because yeah. their gold glove it wasn't the finest. Gold yeah. right. wasn't great though. Not something we're going to see on the highlight reel one day. That's for sure. Yeah. So, so Stucky takes this one, but my two wins from Saturday and Sunday haven't been acknowledged yet on the show. We need to no. You know what? Sure I think we fi- I think we figure that out tomorrow. I was just going to say that. Like we'll we'll figure out. Corey's coming in. We're going to try and do the show at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon live. That's the plan, at least. So, Barb, 2 o'clock live is the plan. Um, and we'll go through the season standings how we want to do it. We'll figure it all out. Tonight I won. Sure. Have at it. Credit to you. You won yesterday. Credit to you. Listen, I, I'm not here for who you got wins. <laughs> I'm here for Cubs wins. Uh-oh. And if i got to take the guy that no one's high on, then I will all season I'll do it. Every game matters. I'm here for who you got wins. For sure. <laughs> uh, Barb, I am going to get you to like Michael Bush before the end of the year. You will like Michael Bush, and you will like it. All right? That's all I have to say. Barb wants Michael Bush sent down. She wants Michael Bush sent to Iowa after tonight. three <laughs> hits tonight. Explain it to me like I'm five I years know, old, people Barb. People were complaining about Explain Cooper. Explain it That's to another me. thing. They wanted him to be like, why wasn't Cooper playing? It was like, well, he's a splits guy, and the guy that played instead of him got three hits. Yeah. I, I, just, I, I am determined to make Barb a Michael Bush fan. See, I'm, I'm with Sean. Barb's right about a lot, but Bush can hit. Yeah. Bush can yeah. play. Big However, she far. is wrong about how the Cubs lose whenever I go to games. That's not true. Cooper's better against lefties. Yes. It's a platoon, like we said. Anyway, I know we're like way Anyways, over. Anyways, Cubs win. Credit right? to us for we're being here an extra 15 late. minutes. Game was late. We're late. Ryan's we'll going home. We're back too. here tomorrow, 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock tomorrow, Barb. See you here where I'm going to continue to make you a Michael Bush fan. Key points. Ben Brown was good. Say it was good. 
A fan Bush of Bush. Bush was good. I'm going to make Barb and, a fan of Bush. And I won who you got. Cubs win 9-8. They've won four in a row. Thanks for and checking out the bat. CHG. And there was a beer bat under 12 seconds. Thanks for checking out the CHGO Cubs podcast. See you at 2 o'clock tomorrow live. Until then, fly the W. Mm-hmm. We all silly like the mayor.